What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Uh, recently, uh, not too long ago, I did a video talking about the first couple of episodes of Andromeda. Uh, this series uh, is available on uh, the Roku channel for free. Uh, it does have ads. Uh, as of filming this video, it's available there. Uh, it might be taken down. I don't really know how fast uh, Roku takes stuff down and puts new stuff up. Uh, but as of now, uh, all five seasons of Andromeda is up on Roku. And I recently finished watching the first season. And I I decided I was not going to keep watching the rest of the show. I was not enjoying myself like I thought I would. Uh, so basically, if you've never seen or heard of Andromeda, the premise is uh, you have this guy, Dylan Hunt. He is basically a captain in Starfleet. And uh, this series is based on concepts created by Gene Roddenberry, who was the creator of Star Trek. Uh, this series actually came out after he died, uh, but uh, his wife, uh, Michelle Barrett Roddenberry, she kind of uh, oversaw uh, getting this show off off the ground, uh, it and uh, Earth Final Conflict, which is also based on some uh, ideas created by Gene Roddenberry. And so uh, this is very Star Trek-y, it feels very Star Trek-y, but also it feels just different enough uh, that at least at the beginning of the season I was interested to see where this would go. Uh, so you have Dylan Hunt, played by Kevin Sorbo, uh, he is a captain on the Andromeda, which is part of uh, your Starfleet type thing, and then uh, he gets put in suspended animation, long story short, and then he wakes up uh, 300 years later later, and the Commonwealth, that is uh, the Andromeda version of Starfleet, it has fallen. And so uh, he meets up with a bunch of uh, scavengers, and uh, by the end of the two-part uh, series premiere, he convinces them to become his new crew, and they are going to go out there, and they are going to rebuild the Commonwealth in this dark future uh, where uh, it's very lawless and uh, everyone is out for themselves. And I was very interested in that premise, a man out of time who's trying to rebuild uh, this uh, very uh, dystopian future. Uh, and try and make things better, uh, kind of like they were when uh, he was back in his own time. I like that idea. Uh, here is the problem with this series, or at least the first season. Uh, once you get past that two-part premiere, it completely abandons that premise. Uh, in several episodes, you will have characters talking about, like, hey, we just got three more planets to sign up for the new Commonwealth Charter, but you never actually get to see them trying to make that work, and that's what I was interested in. I was very curious to see how this 300 year old fossil would go up to the king of this planet and say, hey, uh, 300 years ago, your ancestors, uh, they were part of the commonwealth, and it means you guys help other planets, and other planets help you guys. It would be beneficial for you. And then the king might say, I don't like the uh, sound of that. Go away. And then you have to see Dylan try to struggle with how things are different in this new time, and then try and find a way to make it work. Uh, because really, this premise sounded pretty much impossible. Uh, I would not have expected them to have so easily uh, been able to put the commonwealth together, because by the end of this season, they have like 20-something worlds uh, in their new Commonwealth Charter, and I just don't buy that they would have been able to have done that so easily off-screen at that. Uh, I wanted to see more of that premise. Instead, once you get past uh, the premiere, uh, the two-part uh, series premiere, it basically becomes Star Trek. Uh, they don't have as big of a crew as any of the Star Trek shows did, uh, but it basically becomes, they go out to some world, they have some adventure, and then they move on and go to another world and have an adventure. And they had a premise here that set it apart from Star Trek. It started off being kind of like Star Trek, especially before the 300 year time jump. Uh, it started off very similar to Star Trek, and that's to be expected since this comes from the mind of Gene Roddenberry. But I was kind of hoping that they would take this kind of Star Trek thing and then turn it into something else. No, they just basically keep it as Star Trek more or less throughout the whole season. Uh, so uh, another thing that I thought was really weird is you only have about seven cast members in the show. Uh, you have Dylan Hunt, uh, you have uh, Becca, who is the captain of the uh, scavengers. You have Harper, who is uh, kind of the uh, inventor slash engineer guy. Uh, you have Rami, who is the avatar of uh, the Andromeda ship. Uh, then you have uh, Rev, who is a Magog, uh, which is basically just a uh, very vampire bat-looking uh, humanoid creature thing. Uh, they uh, feast on humans, except Rev does not. Uh, he is a follower of uh, the Wayist religion. Uh, and then you have uh, Trance, who is uh, some pink creature. Nobody knows what she is. Is, and anytime they try to ask her what she is, she uh, very clearly is dodging the question like she doesn't want to answer. Uh, and then you also have uh, 
Tyr, who is a Nishan. And Nishans, as I understand it, uh, they have human ancestors, but they have these little wolverine claws that pop out of their wrists, and they don't consider themselves to be humans, but they do share common ancestry with humans. And uh, they basically think that they're better than everyone. Uh, so you have a pretty small crew here. Uh, you do see these uh, robots that don't have any personality walking around in the background, but they don't really do anything. But with such a small crew, it was really weird to me how often you would have an episode that wouldn't have like half of the cast. And I see what they're doing. Uh, they want to focus this episode on Trance and Becca, or they want to focus this episode on Tyr. Uh, so they want to kind of just really zero in on one character and really give us a little bit about that character. And that's fine, but it's still really weird to me when all of these guys live on the Andromeda, but there might be an episode where they're being fired upon and Dylan says, all hands on deck, and then you only see like four of the main characters. And it's like, okay, where is Trance, Dev, and uh, Rev, Dev, Rev? I don't know. Where are these guys? You know, why are they not here? And uh, that's more understandable whenever you have a Star Trek show where there's a few hundred people on the ship. And if you don't see, I don't know, uh, Riker in this episode, that's not a great example because he was like second in command. If you don't see Jordy, well, maybe he's just busy in engineering. And maybe whatever problem the Enterprise has in this episode, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with engineering. So it wouldn't make sense for him to be up here. But when there's only seven people on the ship, it's really weird to me how often you'll have an episode where most of the characters won't show up, or at least three of the characters out of seven won't show up. And uh, I thought that was really weird. Again, uh, it's trying to avoid the premise that it sets up for itself in the series premiere of we're going to go out there and we're going to reestablish the Commonwealth, all of us together. And then it says, nah, just kidding. Uh, Dylan is going to get captured by these people and they're putting him on trial for something that he did 300 years ago. Okay, that's kind of a fun premise, but it has nothing to do with the series premise of this show. Uh, uh, so, overall, uh, not a fan of this season. Maybe it gets better. I've heard that the guy who is running this show, uh, that he was basically fired midway through season two. Uh, I've heard some people say that the show was at its best uh, in the first one and a half seasons before he got fired. I've heard other people say that it got much better after he got fired. Uh, I didn't really care for this, so maybe I just need to skip forward to after he got fired, but let's be honest, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I didn't really like this. I wanted to like it. Uh, I was excited when I first started watching it, and it just let me down. Uh, so uh, that's about all that I have to say about Season 1 of Andromeda. I hope that you guys like this video, and if you did, be sure to uh, check out some of my other videos that I do. In the meantime, I'll see you guys in the future. Have a good one.